has to grow out of the mindset that Europe's problems are the world's problems. But the world's problems are not Europe's problems. The world cannot be that Eurocentric as it used to be in the past. Look, I don't think we're sitting on the fence just because I don't agree with you. One of the foremost geopolitical strategists on Wall Street sent me this question for you. Mm -hmm. And the question is simple. If and when the choice comes down to it, not today, not tomorrow, but in the future, and she strongly believes it will, for India, will it become, in terms of support, the US or China? And that will be kind of a defining moment that comes out of the situation that we face with Russia right now. You know why I wanted to uh, interrupt you in a way? I mean, I'm, I'm partly reacting to the previous observation. You know, somewhere Europe has to grow out of the mindset that Europe's problems are the world's problems. But the world's problems are not Europe's problems. That it's, if it is you, it's yours. If it is me, it's ours. I think that's something, uh, and I see, you know, reflections of that. Uh, again, in terms of, you know, you, there is a linkage today which is being made. You know, a linkage between China and India and what's happening in Ukraine. So come on, guys. I mean, China and India happened way before anything happened in Ukraine. I mean, I just see this as, frankly, a not very clever argument, a, a very self-serving one. Uh, and uh, uh, this idea that, you know, your grand strategy must be about how you will choose. I will do what, as all of us do, I will weigh the, the situation, you know, like uh, everybody, after all, what do, uh, how do countries eventually make decisions? They but find, Shankar, there, there will uh, always be two axes at this point. I think it's an, it's an understood, accepted fact that you have the West, US-led, you have China as the next uh, potential axis. Where does India fit into this? But are you no, planning to not the, No, aside? I'm sorry. That is exactly where I disagree with you. This is, this is the construct you are trying to impose on me. And I don't accept it. I mean, I, I don't feel, I don't think it's necessary for me to join this axis or not. And if I'm not joining this, I must be with the other one. I don't accept that. I mean, I think I, I am a, I'm one fifth of the world's population. I am what today the fifth or sixth largest economy in the world. Uh, I, I mean, forget the history civilization bit. Everybody knows that. But I, I think I'm entitled to have my own side. I'm entitled to weigh my own interests, make my own choices. And my choices will, uh, will not be cynical and transactional, but they will be a balance of my values and my interests. There is no country in the world which disregards its interests. If you want to talk about one-fifth of the world's population, you cannot also sit on the fence when it comes to foreign policy matters. Uh, Non-alignment isn't plausible if you want to take your position on the world stage. What does it look like with three years of your government left, approximately? Um, and what of this term? Of oh, two years, actually. Oh, two years. Yes. Let, thank you for the correction. Yes. Or yes. even in the next decade or so. What is India's position? Sitting on the fence is not an option to be a world leader. I, look, I don't think we're sitting on the fence just because I don't agree with you uh, doesn't make me sitting on the fence. It means I'm sitting on my ground. You take any and all of the big challenges of the world, some part of the answer either comes out of India, can be contributed to India. And again, I, I, I hate to say, you know, come, it's a bit like a broken record, but look, a lot of things are happening outside uh, Europe. The world is changing, new players are coming, new capabilities are coming, but a new agenda must come. The world cannot be that Eurocentric as it used to be in the past. <laughs>